MAC tournament standings are in play tonight in Buffalo as the Ball State Cardinals have come to Western New York to take on the UB Bulls. Well, hi, everybody, and welcome inside Alumni Arena. I'm Paul Peck with Matt Mattia. It may be 198 miles away from where we sit, but Cleveland is in focus for these two teams. With six games left in MAC play, they're tied in the conference standings. Well, you got thinking about it. That's Cardinals. Yeah, they do not want to have losses to Ball State. That'll hurt them in the standings with the tiebreaker. In that first meeting, a 20-point Ball State win. One of the best games of the year for one of the Max big best big men. That's Tajay Teague. Yeah, Teague does uh, really a little bit of everything for Ball State. The numbers pop off the charts at you. 16.9 a game, 10 rebounds a game in Mac play. And as you see these highlights, he's not just a walking mismatch for other teams. He's got the footwork and the post moves to take you in around the block, but he's really developing an outside shot and especially the mid-range game. Look at the little Euro step. Tajay Teague, a phenomenal player for Ball State. Well, for UB, it's not a big man, but a big scorer who has found his groove. That's junior guard, Javon Graves. 27 points last time out in that win at Toledo. Four for eight from deep. Javon Graves, an absolute stud player for Buffalo, does a little bit of everything, but really what's important too is he is an absolute workhorse. Fourth in the MAC in minutes played. He is a very confident shooter right now, and that is bad news if you're the rest of the Mid-American Conference. Ball State playing for a chance to tie for first place in the MAC West with Northern Illinois. Buffalo playing for a third win in a row. They'll roll out Johnson, Graves, Jordan, Jonathan Williams, and for the third straight game, LaQuill Hardnett in their starting five. On the Ball State side, their typical group of five starters. It's been pretty standard for most of MAC play. Bumbleo, Elamine, Coleman, Mallers, and Tajay Teague. Boy, it's been a tough stretch here for Ball State, Matt. They're coming off the two division leaders in back-to-back -back games, a win against Northern Illinois, a loss at Bowling Green, and now the defending MAC champion in Buffalo. So this is a critical point in the season for them. Well, what a brutal stretch to have to go on at this point, too. But I think that just sort of shows how good the Mid-American Conference is this year, Paul. No easy nights in this conference. It's Buffalo that will have the first possession of this game. We're in Western New York, Amherst, New York. It's the Bulls and the Cardinals in a key Mid-American Conference game in late February. Jonathan Williams in the lane off that right pivot foot, high off the glass and no good in the first board of the game for Taj AT. Well, we'll talk about it all game, Paul. This outstanding defense of Ball State. They are the top defensive team in the MAC. Buffalo, number two offensively. It's going to be a really fun back and forth matchup here of contrasting skills. Ball State loves to shoot the threes. They do it more and better than almost anybody in the MAC. That's going to be a big key here tonight, along with this guy. Teague backs in on Hardnet, kicks it back out. That shot partially blocked of El Amin, and it's going to trigger a Buffalo fast break here. Devontae Jordan in the lane, tried to kick it for Hardnett off his hands, regained by Johnson. This is Javon Graves, he'll pull up from 13 feet for our first basket of the day. If that shot continues to fall for Javon moving throughout the, the rest of the MAC season into the Cleveland, he becomes virtually unguardable. Sixth in the MAC and scoring at 16.6 per game and coming off that great performance that you talked about. And there's the other big guy in this game, and that's Tajay Teague with his first two. Yeah, we're going to be saying his name an awful lot, Paul, today. He is at seven 20 point games, including 25. That was a season high against Buffalo last time these two teams matched up. We got to really keep our eye on that post matchup down low between. Whoever's got Teague today. Bulls have struggled to stop talented, athletic big men all season long. And Teague's performance that you mentioned, Matt, just another example of that. So, again, we'll see how big a factor he can be here. He was the factor in that 20-point win back in January. This is Bumbleo. He'll kick it out. 
to Mowers for three. That's the 150th three-pointer of the career of Kyle Mowers. Hand in his face, too. A 39% three-point shooter. Cash from outside. Ninth on Ball State's all-time list for three-pointers made. Antoine Johnson, he's been a hot scorer lately. That one off the rim, rebounded by Hardnett, and shocking missed shot by Laquille Hardnett. <laughs> Tell you about that in a moment. And here comes Teague, he'll bring it into the front court. This is Jerron Coleman looking for an opening. He'll back off and shoot the three and hit it. What do you know? Another three-pointer. This one from Ball State. They really shoot the ball well. Paul just mentioned it. One of the top three-point shooting teams in the Mid-American Conference. And man, do they rely on that. And Coleman is only the fourth most active three-point shooter on this team. Jonathan Williams off the rim. Tapped up and a rebound for Ball State. Well, the Quill Hardnett just missed his second field goal today. He's only missed two field goals twice this season. He'd only missed efficiency. two in Mac play. <laughs> Now it was 18 of 20, now 18 of 22. And that's a loose ball and a steal. Antoine Johnson drives in on Coleman. Good defense by Coleman and he'll grab the rebound. And the Bulls are struggling around the rim right now. Ball State's made their money at this year, Paul. The defensive end, especially their ability to match up in transition. Everyone knows Buffalo's gonna try and run, especially Ball State. So far, so good for the Cardinal defense. Wide open shot for El Amin is no good, and Buffalo, the nation's number two rebounding team, had two guys there to grab it. It's an early six point Ball State lead. Step back three for Devontae Jordan rims out, and there's the game of basketball in a nutshell. Buffalo, in the first half of their win the other night uh, against Kent State, shot 63% in the first half. Today, they're shooting. 13% right now. Now it's early. I know. Oh! Ball now, came firing over by us. Yeah. Got to watch that basketball there. Hit hit a young lady in the head here. We got to get our eyes on the court. Right now, what the eyes on the court are showing is a good start for the ball state. No one knows where it comes from. It's the fighting spirit. Ready to fight whatever shape the battle takes. As long as there are battles, there will always be Marines. This is NutPods, a small business on Amazon. This is their CEO. Hi. I thought combining coconuts and almonds to create a creamer was nuts. Who do you work for? <laughs> They're always adding employees, flavors, and fans. <sighs> We are obsessed with giving our customers an amazing product they're going to love, and Amazon really helps us do that. More than half of everything sold on Amazon comes from small and medium-sized businesses, like NutPods. And you can find them on Amazon. That's right, TurboTax Free is free. Free, 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 free. The biggest fight in recent history. Wild and Fury 2, Saturday. Buy now on pay per view or ESPN. Well, what's going to give tonight is the question between the unstoppable force and the immovable object, as you referenced, Matt. Something has got to change here tonight. Well, here's something you want to maybe keep in mind. I mean, it's no surprise that Ball State has been phenomenal defending the ball all year, but Buffalo has really come into their own on the defensive end, Paul, the last few games. They're only giving up 64 points per game in these last three contests. So, you know, maybe you give the edge to UB in the sense that their defense is starting to wake up to back up that prolific offense. Yeah, and, and because Ball State's defense has been so good, they haven't had to score a lot of Correct. points. 70 or more only twice 
in the last 10 games and only three times in their 12 MAC games, but that's still gotten them seven and five because they've been able to win in the 60s. And if they can keep Buffalo shooting the way they're shooting now, that's gonna happen again. Now, again, it's early, but Buffalo just one of eight shooting from the field. And a lot of them have been short ones and easy ones. Josh and Bala into the game for the Bulls for the first time as well, as is Gabe Grant. So Coach Weitzel trying to make a little bit of a change after what he saw Paul open that uh, those first four minutes. Yeah, and Bala started a good bulk of the season. He's only been coming off the bench the last five games. A lot of that is a little bit of the experience of what the Bulls did last year with Nick Perkins, where you brought the big man in for some instant offensive spark off the bench, and... Uh, Jim Weitzel sort of living off of what Nate Oates talked about last year, which is let the officials get a few of those tone-setting calls out of the way and you don't get them inflicted on one of your best players. That's Kanai Akri with the, with the bucket for Ball State. A 10-0 Ball State run. you got to just tip your cap to what the Cardinals have come in here so far and done. Just punched Buffalo in the mouth, Paul, and UB yet to get up off the mat. And a lot of that is to the credit of the seventh year head coach of the Ball State Cardinals, James Whitford. Overall record of 103 and 116. Third coach in Ball State history to get to 100 wins. Got his game plan working well here tonight against Buffalo's squad led by Jim Weitzel. Inbounds for the Bulls and Bala. Antoine Johnson, Rondo Segu in off the bench as well. So three guys off the bench in the game now for Buffalo as Weitzel looks for a spark. Will Mbala be the guy to deliver it? He'll spin, he'll shoot, way off. And once again, a lot of the Bulls misses, of which there are eight of them so far, have come within 10 feet of the basket. That's out of bounds, and it will stay with the with the Ball State Cardinals. There's Jim Weitzel in his first year as the head coach after four years and as assistant to Nate Oates. Overall, 25 years as a college basketball head coach, 403 career victories. El Amin will drive into the lane, spin, shoot, off the rim, tip attempt by Hazen is no good, but we're gonna get a foul. Ooh, I think they got Josh and Bala. It's going to put Hazen to the free throw line for a pair and continue to try to run this uh, little spurt up here on Buffalo. And I tell you, I'm impressed so far. Ball State's done a really, really nice job on both ends of the ball. They're getting good looks and they're contesting everything Buffalo's had on the other end. They're living up to the hype uh, so far with this defense. Bracken Hazen, two free throws for the junior from Columbia City, Indiana. 71% free throw shooter, averages 4.1 per game. Transfer in 2017 from Arkansas is Bracken Hazen, but an Indiana native. A lot of those on this roster, Paul. Nine of them to be exact. That's been a staple of what Coach Whitford has done at Ball State. It is working, recruiting in that home state of Indiana. Some phenomenal high school hoops. Only makes sense, doesn't it? And, Got to. and I know it hasn't always been that the case at Ball State. I think that was part of Whitford's, um, you know, charge when he took the job was to better recruit the home state. Miss on the three by Graves, and an out of bounds rebound attempt that will stay with the Bulls. So again, once again, it's it's just what basketball is. Buffalo comes out and lights up Toledo in their last game in the first half, and here down by ten and one of ten shooting. Well, we were talking only about four days ago. Yeah, we were talking about what's going to break first. Is it the high-powered offense or is it the the flash defense? And so far, you got to nudge in favor of the defense. It's a 12-0 Ball State run. Will it be more? Not there. The miss on the three by Acre. This is where Buffalo's got to take advantage. Javon Graves going right to the hoop. I love the aggression. Don't let Ball State set up, but. You go back the other way. El Amin misses off of pressure from Jordan. Spin move in the lane, floater short. Offensive rebound, Mbala to Jordan. He misses the gimme, and finally it gets tipped Ooh. back in by Mbala. I think Josh reached up there, Paul, and he, he pulled the lid that was off that rim down there. He ripped it off when he went up, and it decided to go in that time. So that ends the 12-0 <laughs> Ball State run. Maybe 
that will be the lid lifter that the Bulls need on that basket. Elamine sees an opening and swatted into the second row no. by Josh Mbala. No, 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 says Josh Mbala. Paul, I mean, just look at the outstretched arms. How are you possibly supposed to get a shot off over that? Josh Mbala is fifth in the MAC in block shots, and there may not be a more dramatic one than that. Inbound to Bumbleo, he'll float, short off the rim, rebounded by the Bulls and Rondo Segu. Grant hands off to Graves, back to Grant for three, short. That will stay with the Bulls. Thanks to the second effort from Josh Mbala again. We know how good of an offensive rebounder Josh is. 11th in the nation with just under four a game. That's back-to-back -back times he's been able to give Buffalo a second chance opportunity. A couple of more substitutions early into the ball game. Savion Gallion, who hadn't played a lot of minutes this year, but gave the Bulls a really nice five-minute stretch in that first half of their win against Toledo. And Gallion, one of the freshmen from Washington, D.C. on this roster. Sagu with the moves. Dumps it for Mbala, left-hander, and one! Flex on him, young fella. Josh Mbala, a powerful what just a beautiful post move where Josh has just been phenomenal all year. I guess you can almost almost call that an offensive rebound as he got it off with a block shot attempt. And now all of a sudden the Bulls uh, taking advantage of a two-minute Ball State scoring drought to put some points on the board of their own and cut into this lead. That's five early for Josh Mbala, the sophomore from Bordeaux, France. And so far, that move that Coach Weitzel had of having Mbala come off the bench instead of the starting five has sort of helped give this second roster, if you will, the second wave of players another offensive opportunity. Nice pass, but El Amin can't finish. Stutter step by Jordan, kick to Segu, thought about the three. And he got it stripped away. Good defense by Bumbleo. Quickly up to Acre. Acre on Gallion. And it counts. One. Foul on Gallion. And an and one opportunity for Kanai Acre. And before we get that free throw, we take a timeout. The redshirt freshman off the bench with a pretty play for the Ball State Cardinals. T-Mobile's new offer on iPhone 11 is even better on our newest, most powerful signal. Switch to T-Mobile now and get two lines of Unlimited for only $90 and two iPhone 11s on us. Only at T-Mobile. No one knows where it comes from. It's the fighting spirit. Ready to fight whatever shape the battle takes. As long as there are battles, there will always be Marines. That's right, TurboTax Free is free. Free, 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 free. Just a few ticks left on the clock. Lillard checking the inbox. He's got to open up a new draft. Got to be careful with typos and punctuation here. There's no time to edit and resend. And send! Another gorgeous buzzer beating email. Just remarkable. Feels so, feels so, feels so good. Lob to Williamson and he smashes the rim. Pelicans, Blazers, Friday on ESPN. Ball for all. And what a cool moment for the UB women's basketball team. A $100,000 donation by the incredibly generous Murchie family that will fund the women's basketball's first ever international trip 
They're going to go to Spain in June. The Murchie family has been so incredibly generous to UB Athletics, the Murchie family fieldhouse, an example of that. Are you going to get to go, Mr. I Voice am. of Bulls Women's I Basketball? Am, yep. A little España for uh, you I'm gonna in summer? To, I'm going to have to brush up on it. Boy, it took like eight years of Spanish in college. I'm not sure I could hold my own right now in, uh, in a foreign country like that. I'm quite all right here, but well, uh, really you. excited, really excited to be able to go. And how about the fact Coach Jack said her largest donation in her career has been 25 grand. Just like that, snap your fingers, 100 grand. That's awesome. Good for you. Congratulations to Felicia Leggett Jack and the UB women's team. It's going to be a fun off-season trip for them. And again, an incredibly generous donation from the Murchie family. Free throw was missed by Acre. So the Bulls have a chance to kind of cut into this lead again. Mbala up and under move. He got stuffed by Teague. And we're going to get a battle for the basketball. Jump ball will go to the Cardinals. Jennifer, what an excellent defensive effort out of Teague to just palm that ball right there out of Josh Mbala. I mean, we focused on Teague offensively, Paul, in that open and what he brings to the table. I think it kind of goes under the radar what a phenomenal defender he is as well. 43 blocks, 33 steals as well. He does a little bit of everything, really a lot of bit of everything for Ball State. Second in the back and block shots is Tajay Teague. What a good matchup this is down low with Mbala and Teague. This is a treat. Whip it around, good ball movement by Ball State, and that's Jerron Coleman draining his second three. The redshirt freshman from Indianapolis. 33% three-point shooters, two for two. Jonathan Williams will drive the left side and hit. He is a key player for Buffalo, particularly in the paint. They're going to need his point production. That's his first two of the night. What a gorgeous little body control move that was by Janathan to glide in the air and finish it off. Whistle away from the ball, going to go on Buffalo. Look at this three here from Jerron Coleman. I mean, we talked about it too. There's three big shooters for Ball State as far as the three point category goes. There's three of them that shoot 135 or more, but, you know, Jerron Coleman really coming into his own shooting the ball as well. He poses another deep threat for a team that really relies on the bomb. Yeah, most three-point attempts of any team in the MAC. second most three-pointers made per game. That one gets a little flexing from Coleman down low, and he's got eight early points. And it's back to a 10-point lead. Really impressed with that freshman backcourt for Ball State and Bumbleo and Coleman. Gallion long on the three attempt. It will bounce off of Mallers and will stay with the Bulls. Graves will check back in for Buffalo. There's the three by Mal or by uh, Gallion, and you see it looks like it hits the left hand, left arm of Mallers. Nice inbounds. Nathan Williams had it blocked from behind. Ball State defense is no joke. Coleman had it knocked away and stolen away. Here's Mbala. He's going to go all the way in for the layup. Oh, he's an Mballer, is Josh Mbala. A great drive to the hoop. I thought we were about to see a poster for the ages there for a second. He was winding yeah. up like he was going to jump out so of the did gym. I. So did I. I thought that was a takeoff <laughs> from the 10 feet away and a dunk, but he I pulled was, all of us. I was ready to take the headset off and call it a night if that happened. And Mbala knocked that pass away. Shot clock's under 10. Maulers gets down low. Reverse layup. We'll draw the foul with about four on the shot clock. What a good stretch of defense by Savion Gallon, Gallion. But look at this little Mbala play here again, Paul. I'm telling you, I thought he was just winding up for an absolute poster. Look at the big fella go. Soft as ever off the glass. Well, crowd does not like the call on Jonathan Williams, his first, and it's going to send Mallers to the free throw line where he hits at 84%. You know, Ball State's got an interesting blend of players, Paul, in the sense that they've got some really good young stars. They've got freshmen averaging 69 minutes a game. That's the most in the map. But then you've got this nice little complement of Kyle Mallers, who's the senior, and Teague, the redshirt senior. That's a perfect mix of the youngsters who are having great starts to their career, but also that veteran presence on a team. Kyle Mallers hits them both. 10-point lead back for Ball State. Just under nine minutes to go in the first half. Long three, Jonathan Williams rims out. Hey, 
Kick on the left side, Mallers three, way short. Here comes Zimbala again. Will he take it all the way? He tried and draws a foul. Gosh, Zimbala the point guard right now. This kid's running up and down the court like he's not sure what position he's playing. He's got all the athleticism in the world. Gliding to the basket again and earning a hard-fought trip to the charity strike. I kind of think there's a little bit of him seeing people getting out of his way. If you're going to get out of my way, I might as well go all, all yep. the way to the rim. Uh, if I see Josh and Bala with a head of steam at half court, I might make a business decision there as well. Yeah. Turn around and ask for a sub mid-play. I'm good. Fouls on Mallers. That's the eighth point of the game now for Josh Mbala. Just a little under his average. Eight of 12 of uh, 12 Buffalo's points have come from Mbala. But they're going to need more because despite all of that, still down by nine. All right, so where's Buffalo's offense come from here now? Josh Mbala gets a much-deserved rest. Played a nice stretch of minutes there. Now Brock Bertram comes in. Someone else has to step up here. Look at the Buffalo backcourt. Teague backs in on Bertram, kicks it to Coleman. That one rims out. Antoine Johnson's average scored 25 points in his last two games. Maybe it'll come from him, or maybe... Graves long on the three. Javon, after that 27-point effort, not feeling it yet. What a good find from Devontae Jordan, though, in that thick of things there. Mowers looking for something somewhere. He'll kick it into the corner, and that's an offensive foul. And Mallers seemed to be a little out of control and a little indecisive, and he paid for it with his second personal foul of the night. We get a timeout on the court here at Buffalo's Alumni Arena, a critical Mid-American Conference game as Ball State up by eight. You know I'd love to be there. It's just super far. It's not that far. We have unlimited data. We can chat all we want. I'm comfy. Uh, but it's like 10 feet. Like I said, super far. It's not just the ships, the armor, or aircraft. It's the will to fight and determination to win. Found inside every Marine. Battles won. Capital One knows life doesn't update you about your credit card. So meet Eno, the Capital One assistant that catches things that might look wrong and helps you fix them. Another way Capital One is watching out for your money when you're not. What's in your wallet? Free, 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 That's right. TurboTax free is free. Free, 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 free. Well, we've got two of the top 10 shot blocking teams in the MAC, and that's been on display here. You better not come into the paint with any of that weak stuff, says Josh Mbala there. But how about Ball State? Three blocks of their own as well, coming from three separate players. It has just been a defensive clinic so far from the Cardinals, Paul. Yeah, meanwhile, the Bulls are the Mac's leading shot blocking team, and a lot of those come from their guards. Devontae Jordan's top 10 in the Mac in shot blocks, and as a guard position, that's a little bit unusual, but that's been a big part of the defensive effort for Ball State right now. And here's an indication of where Buffalo is struggling. Zero assists means they're not moving the ball well, and that may have a lot to do with the offensive trouble. That might be wow. the first assist on the bucket by Jonathan Williams. Well, it's been a mixture of, of lack of ball movement, but also just lack of shot making. A, a couple of nice passes have been made throughout this contest so far, but UB just not knocking down their open shots. That was Graves on the assist to Williams, down to a six point lead, up to an eight point lead. Right now, the hottest Ball State Cardinals, Jerron Coleman. 
two great individual performances so far. One from Abala and one from Coleman just pacing their teams. Long on the three is Antoine Johnson. Coleman with the rebound. Coleman really wants to stack the sheet there. He rips sure that is. rebound away from his teammate. <laughs> Traveling called on Bracken Hazen. And that's you know, the look on Jim Weitzel's face. Tells you a little bit of watching his team that shot 6 for 26 and 0 for 8 from 3 right now. And again, that ball movement is key to getting better and open shots. And there was an assisted attempt that was knocked away in a good defensive play by Hazen. And yeah, not surprising, Josh and Ballo ready and waiting to come back in. Been the only solid go-to offensive option so far for the Bulls, who now are just getting chewed up on the defensive end. And another quick timeout. This one from Coach Weitzel, Paul, though, as the Bulls find themselves down by 10. And Jerron Coleman now, 12 of those 25 points, and aggressively taking it to the basket. He's just got a really good game. I mean, you watch the film from the last couple of contests. Jerron Coleman, the redshirt freshman out of Indianapolis, he is just teetering on having a huge year here in the back moving forward. 8.8 .8 points a game and 73 assists as well. So he does, you know, a little bit of everything for Ball State. And I tell you, the rest of the Cardinals fans and Coach Whitford and his staff got to be thrilled with the way that Jerron Coleman has played. Yeah, and here's a guy as a redshirt freshman who's kind of settling in. He's averaged over 11 points a game in his last seven games. And... You see the numbers here tonight. He's six foot five. He's a tall, long guard, and really going to be a terrific player moving forward. Uh, among all MAC freshmen in MAC games, Coleman, number two in points, number one in rebounds. 17 points, nine boards. Last time out against BG to go along with that point, Paul. So what he's doing here tonight, not a huge surprise, and that's Coleman, or correction, Antoine Johnson going right to the rim and getting fouled by Bracken Hazen. Could not have felt good there, as you see. He went right to the ground after a hit. Take another look at this one. This does not feel good when you get your, uh, your, your body taken out from under you and all your weight just crashes to the court. But I do sense that that's Antoine Johnson being aggressive and saying somebody needs to step up, and if I have to go up against the six foot eight inch guy, I'm going to be willing to do that. And I think that's what you get from a senior like Antoine Johnson who gets his first point of the night. Yeah, you said it, the senior. I think that's just the veteran play by Antoine Johnson. Say, look, we're not making the threes. Let's let's force the envelope. Let's take it down the throat. Transfer from Middle Tennessee State, where he played at a high level on an NCAA tournament team at MTSU. Average 10 points a game before transferring here to Buffalo. And in that first meeting between these two teams, it was Antoine Johnson that led the Bulls in school. And that's going to be out of bounds, and the Buffalo bench wants it to be their ball, but the officials say the other way. Let's see. Just a, well, first, what a nice effort from Josh. I mean, big fella diving on the ground, tipping it away. Let's see late. Come to tell. Yeah, not real conclusive there. That one will go the other way. No harm, no foul. So the Buffalo defense, that's what they need here. You know, the offense will come, Paul, but the defense it just cannot continue to let Ball State push out a lead here and build on it. The shots will fall eventually, but it's, it's the defense that has to carry UB. Yeah, and I think enough. there's been just enough defense to not let Ball State build any bigger than a 10-point lead, and, and once that shooting comes, that's when this one will get back to being the kind of tight game that we expected. And again, another aggressive move by Antoine Johnson. To draw him a big ice bath after this one. Look at this, another one. He goes right to the ground, but ball three fouls now on Bracken Hazen. Yep, that'll uh, limit his ability to continue to come in off the bench. They stayed five of their last seven from the floor, but this is a, a good way to kind of break out of an offensive slump, right? Get to the free throw line and more importantly make them. Antoine Johnson, one of the better free throw shooters on this roster, came in at an 80% clip. Yeah, and in general, this is not a particularly good Buffalo free throw shooting team that only averages 65%, which ranks them towards the bottom in the NCAA stats. But yeah. uh, right now they're accounting for their lack of three-point shooting by generally good free throw shooting. Generally. Yeah. There are the numbers. First, so the first miss. Yeah, six of seven now. This is El Amin, second leading scorer who has yet to score here tonight for Ball State. 
instead the drive to the hoop will come from Myron Thomas and it will roll off. Quick pass, Devontae Jordan tried to find Josh Mbala and instead it will draw a foul. What a bizarre game so far as far as, far as the scoring goes here, Paul, because if you tell me right now that you were able to hold El Amin to zero points and you've got Teague to just two points, but Ball State's up 25-18, I call you crazy. Yeah, and the, the Ball State hasn't really looked much for Taj 18. And he hasn't really been a part of the offense. John Coleman's making everything he's looking at. And nice pick of the pocket from behind by Acre. Antoine Johnson was going to the rack again. And that's going to be deflected out of bounds off Buffalo. There's the numbers of Tajay Teague put up in the first meeting between these two teams. Look at the quick hands by Akery from behind. The cardinal rule there when you get into the paint, don't let that ball drop down low. Keep it high and tight. Antoine Johnson lets it drift below his, uh, his hip there, and the Ball State defense takes advantage. Antoine Johnson got called after taking the punishment of a collision, and he couldn't believe it because he paid for that with his second foul. It happened right in front of me, and I caught it out of the corner of my eye, and I'm like, man, those two guys hit real hard, and then it was the guy that got hit harder that gets the foul. So Johnson will have to check out. Sagu will replace him. Buffalo trying to fight their way back in this after a tough shooting night so far. And that's an over and back across the midcourt line after good defense by Josh and Bob. Paul State does not agree with that one. Coach Whitford yelling at that one, but I think they're going to say that T got it back before going over the, uh, the timeline there. And that's what caused them to then bring it over the timeline. I think he's arguing that Josh Abala tipped that one out, Paul, but the referee said no. Uh, Tajay actually got control of it back while he was on the right side of the court and then drifted backwards. So, so there's your violation. Yep, so it stays a Buffalo basketball down by seven here. Under five minutes to go into Mbala, and he gets fouled again. Wow. Now, it seems pretty clear, Matt, that Buffalo's offensive approach here is to go inside on Ball State. And they've had limited success because they haven't hit a lot of their shots, but they've also gone to the free throw line a lot. That looked like a pretty outstanding defensive effort there by Teague. Maybe the follow-through caught Josh. And Mbala now teetering on double figures for Buffalo while everyone else is still really struggling to heat up here. Three for three from the line for the 56% free throw shooter. And on cue, as Matt mentioned, that's 10 points now for Josh and Bala. 10 of the 19 Buffalo points. Well, if you're Buffalo, Paul, you look at the score, you're down six, potentially five here if I don't broadcast jinx it, which I, of course I did. 22% though from the floor, and you're still hanging close if you're well, Buffalo. Crowd didn't like that one either. Let's see, who did this go off of? Clearly Ball State. That's a tough one Ishmael to take. Ishmael yeah. seemed to be the last one to touch it. Yeah, that's a tough one for Buffalo. And stolen away by Devontae Jordan. Jordan kind of bumps it to himself, and that one is going to count. And the foul. Yeah, goaltending on Ball State. That was pretty blatant, too. I think Ball State would have been better off letting that one go, as that was a tough look. But look at Devontae Jordan contort his body here, spin around, and he knew right away, get that one to count the old-fashioned way. Yeah, boy, Myron Thomas going up pretty high, but after the fact, and the foul was drawn by Jordan, who he'll, he'll go to the line with a chance to cut this lead to three. The foul was on Elamine. And it looks like a lane violation. No, a foul. Or no, correct, it is a line, lane violation, so Jordan's going to get another one to try to complete the three-point play. Struggles from the free throw line, though, Paul. He's a phenomenal player, does everything for Buffalo, but the free throw shooting has always been an Achilles heel of Devonta Jordan. Yes, it has. On the season, just a 46% free throw shooter. Buffalo on a 6-0 run here as Ball State's turned it over three times in the last two minutes. And Charge. offensive foul. Devontae Jordan doing it on both ends of the ball for the Buffalo Bulls. That's the 15th drawn charge of the year for Devontae Jordan. 
And the first foul of the night on Jerron Coleman. All right, you got yourself a four-point ball game, and you're shooting 25% from the floor. If you're Buffalo, you get a bucket here, you're feeling pretty good about where you're standing. Graves hangs but can't hit, and throw in 0 for 8 from three-point distance. Typical churn it out, rough house, mid-American conference, mid-February battle. Teague will kick it out to El Amin. And that goes. Shooter's touch. I was surprised that Teague kicked that back out. He had a mismatch with Rondo Segu on him. But I guess he knows that the three-pointers are worth more than the deuce. Segu for three. That won't go. Good offensive board by Graves. Jordan will kick it. Segu again. That won't go either. 0 for 10 from behind the arc for the Bulls. And Coleman will windmill that one. Oh, you're kidding me. And draw the foul. I thought that had a chance of falling for a second. So while uh, Buffalo struggles to hit threes, Kali, uh, Ishmael El Amin, not quite his dad, but pretty darn close. It's a seven point Ball State lead. T Mobile's new offer on iPhone 11 is even better on our newest, most powerful signal. Switch to T-Mobile now and get two lines of unlimited for only $90 and two iPhone 11s on us. Only at T-Mobile. Acura in two words. Supercars. Capital One knows life doesn't update you about your credit card. So meet Eno, the Capital One assistant that catches things that might look wrong and helps you fix them. Another way Capital One is watching out for your money when you're not. What's in your wallet? When there's a power out, we're the ones out there fixing it. Rain, snow, heat, we're out there. Every day, we're working to keep homes and businesses connected. Testing equipment, replacing thousands of electrical poles, expanding our energy grid. And no matter what happens, we're prepared around the clock to keep the lights on. You're not leaving, you're there until they have power. With the hardworking people we have on the line, the energy to serve our community is boundless. Coming down the stretch of the first half, Paul Peck and Matt Matee here at UB's Alumni Arena. Ball State has led almost all of this first half and taken advantage of some very rough Buffalo shooting prompted by some very good Ball State defense, Matt. And when you look at the three-point numbers, this is the number three ranked three-point defensive team in the MAC in Ball State, holding Buffalo to 0 for 10 in their game against Kent State on February 4th. They held the Golden Flashes to one of 20 behind the arc. So it's not, it, as much as it's Buffalo struggling to hit, I think it's what Ball State is doing defensively to make those shots harder. Sure, and you know, there's been a, a fair share of Buffalo looks that they should be making, but you're absolutely right with the way that Ball State, not only defending in the half court, but you've just an excellent job even in transition. Some of where Buffalo, especially over the last few years, has made all their money out in transition. Ball State doing a really, really nice job matching up there and uh, not getting Buffalo any easy looks. One of two free throws for Jerron Coleman. Gives him 13 points in the game. Second one misses, and the possession will go to the Bulls. So despite that 0 and 10, 0 4 10, again, Buffalo still hanging in range here. Eight first half turnovers from Ball State have kept this closer than Cardinals fans would like it to be. Devontae Jordan. Finally gets Buffalo's first three-pointer. You knew that was going to come eventually, or at least you hoped you did, but at least maybe you took the weight off your shoulders there. Maybe one falls and I'll start to go down soon. And that gets a little life into this crowd in the final three minutes of the first half. Mallers looking for someone, something. Hands it off to El Amin. Shot clock at three, at two. El Amin's three is no good to just barely beat the shot clock. Rebound to the Bulls. Here's Segu on the move to Graves. 
Sagoon Graves playing catch. Javon steps back, steps forward. Jonathan Williams up and under, left-handed move won't go. I like the, the thought of Jonathan to take it in there and try to score a little bit closer to the basket, but he did have a second there where he could have let a triple fly. Mallers for three, won't go. But it will stay with the Cardinals. Ball kind of tipped yeah. that out of bounds himself. How about Blake Huggins into the game for, for Paul State here, Paul? He's only played in three games and has only had nine minutes of action all year long. So a little bizarre to see Huggins in here in the first half. Probably related to Hazen's foul yep. trouble, I would suspect. And that didn't last very long. No, it's Huggins not. checks out. No. Slowly but surely for yeah. the young fella. There you go. Inbound to Teague, who replaced Hayden uh, Huggins in the game. Under two minutes here, first half. This is Josh Thompson spinning in the lane. Good Wild shot won't go. J Jordan for three, way off. El Amin for three, in and out. Man. Who wants a basket here? Right. Sheesh. Does anybody want one? All right, let's see what Buffalo can write up here. Buck 20 left in the half. It'll be a deep three-pointer. I tell you, Javon Graves stepping into one. Yeah, he wanted one, and it's down to a two-point lead. A 6-0 run for Buffalo. Their only two threes of the afternoon prompt a timeout call by James Whitford. And again, this is what happens. Uh, Ball State hasn't been able to put Buffalo away after a poor shooting half, and the Bulls have been able to take advantage. Yeah, the 35% three-point shooter, Javon Graves, really coming on strong as of late. We mentioned in the open, 27 points. He had four three-pointers last time out as well, Paul. So that's a much uh, welcome sight for Buffalo fans to see Graves stick a deep triple. Critical stretch for the Bulls, as we talked about at the beginning of the broadcast. The other team that's tied at 7-5 and five in that battle for one of those four buys to Cleveland is Kent State. And that's who Buffalo will play on Friday night. And once again, Kent State already owns a win over the Bulls, so tiebreaker becomes key in all of that as well. So these are some critical games for Buffalo, and that will contend. They're all critical. There's only six left. Five left after tonight, Matt. Well, it's just it's that time of year, right? I said it earlier on. It, it, it's easy to just go out and concentrate on basketball when you're in early January, mid-January. But when you get into this portion of the year, especially when you've got Cleveland right around the corner, all of these games feel like they count for one and a half. Let, the refs are looking at the clock. As you could see there, there was 116 left when Graves hit that three-pointer. And... I don't know, right now the clock shows 107, so I don't know if that's what our collection of Edwin Young, Robert Felder, and Justin Chamion are looking at to make sure the clock numbers are right. Well, if it's right around 110 or so, you've got a couple of possessions left in this half. If you're in the Buffalo huddle right now, you're saying, look, guys, we've made a nice job of hanging around, hanging around. We're not playing our best basketball. And if you're Ball State, you're going, hey, wait a second. What were we doing in the first 10 minutes that we can get back to here in the final minute or so? Because early on, the Cardinals were getting everything they wanted done. And really not so much as of late. They've sort of switched roles here over the last six or seven minutes. So you can see the explanation from Edwin Young to Jim Whitesell as we've resolved whatever issue and they're going to take it down to 101. So it, it's going to go from 107 to 101. I think the, art, the, the, the issue there was when that timeout was called. So, so now we're under a minute to go here in the first half in what has now become a two-point game. At one point, a 10-point Ball State lead. A couple points, it was a 10-point lead. Tajay Teague has a bounce off his hand, stolen away by Grant. And Buffalo now with a chance to take the lead back going into the locker room. Jordan sees an opening, kicks it for Graves for three. No good. Rebound, Grant got it blocked on the putback, and he'll draw the foul and clap of the hands to the student section for Gabe Grant. What an effort out of Gabe Grant. A fan favorite around here in Alumni Arena too, Paul. And I tell you, that's just a powerful offensive rebound as he crashes the glass there. And another big foul here, Paul, on Ball State as Tajay T has now picked up his third. Yeah, that's big. That's three on the big man, Tajay T, who has only two points in this game to go along with six rebounds. But 
you've seen him not be much a part of the offense in only 13 minutes played. And it's too bad. Tajay Teague is a ton of fun to watch. I was sitting there eating my breakfast this morning watching that Ball State Bowling Green game. And there were a couple of different times we were left just watching this kid like, man, he can play. But really, tip of the cap to Buffalo uh, doing a nice job on Tajay Teague so far. And how about that? It is Buffalo and Ball State tied following two free throws from Gabe Grant. It's an 8-0 run for the Bulls. It's a three-minute scoring drought for Ball State. And who's going to have the lead, if anyone, going into the locker room to be determined here in our final 15 seconds? Coleman is going to play for that final shot. Under 10, Coleman slides to the right, pulls up, shoots a three, a front rim, no good. Jordan late after the buzzer, but you know what? That's a victory for the Bulls. They were down at 1.10. They couldn't even find the net, and they go into the halftime locker room all tied up. Going to be a fun second 20 minutes, but first, halftime from here at Buffalo's Alumni Arena. T-Mobile's new offer on iPhone 11 is even better on our newest, most powerful signal. Switch to T-Mobile now and get two lines of unlimited for only $90 and two iPhone 11s on us. Only at T-Mobile. When there's a power out, we're the ones out there fixing it. Rain, snow, heat, we're out there. Every day, we're working to keep homes and businesses connected. Testing equipment, replacing thousands of electrical poles, expanding our energy grid. And no matter what happens, we're prepared around the clock to keep the lights on. You're not leaving, you're there until they have power. With the hardworking people we have on the line, the energy to serve our community is boundless. Little Caesars delivery. That's the best thing since sliced bread. We got a problem. There's a new best thing. New ideas. Go. Travel sliced bread. Sparkle bread. Bread pets. Dear Lord. Run the numbers. Ran the numbers. Run them again. Sliced bread is toast. This is not happening. Everything is fine. <laughs> <laughs> Little Caesar's delivery. Best thing since sliced, sliced bread. I know. Save $5 or more over other national chains on delivered pizza. Pizza, pizza. How fast does Dove Dry Spray actually dry? Dry Spray dries in an instant, leaving these men with nothing to do in this ad. Thankfully, we've got something to fill the time, instantly putting these guys back into their comfort zone. Dove Dry Spray dries instantly and keeps you protected for 48 hours. Gatorade Zero. All the electrolytes, zero sugar. Boom, and I really care what my mom can do. Bulldozer, make room. Write that pun for me too. Ready for more? Bring it on. Gatorade Zero. Get more out of zero. I'm offensive assistant coach for the San Francisco 49ers. I'm not just here to be the token female, I'm here to help us win. The Surface Pro helps me get what's in my head and get it out onto the field. Let's go, let's run it again, run it again! A lot of you guys see me as a superhero. Wade, yes! Y'all didn't see the grind. Y'all didn't see the tears. Wade, we've been doing 10 years worth of the interviews. Where should we begin? This is my life. Let's go. This is our stage. The UFC on ESPN+. Plus. Halftime here at UB's Alumni Arena. Buffalo and Ball State all tied up at 29 thanks to an 8-0 run to end the half by 
the UB Bulls. Well, part of that run was some contributions from Bulls senior guard Antoine Johnson. Transferred here to Buffalo, had to sit out, and certainly he appreciates the opportunity he's getting for his final year of college basketball. He's returned that by showing leadership on the court and off the court. Let's meet the Bulls senior from Longwood, Florida. Hey, Antoine Johnson, senior guard, UB men's basketball team. Williams takes Hammond to the paint. Johnson out of the corner, buries a three-pointer. I started playing basketball at like the age of five in this church league. Uh, my, my dad started me early. I went one year at Juco and uh, transferred to Middle Tennessee, and I ended up here. As soon as I stepped up, up here, I saw the, the culture, you know, everyone was nice. They greeted me warm, welcome. It was definitely difficult because it was times, you know, when I saw the team playing and I wanted to help. I feel like I, I became a better player for sure. You know, just being able to sit back and watch. Me and Gabe started right at the you know, same point. You know, we came in together. We went through the same process. We practiced against the same guys. We, you know, we just saw the, like how those guys competed. And, you know, we talked about it every day, you know, just taking notes from them and just being able to, you know, bring it into this year. When I step on the court, you can expect to see 100% effort. You know, I'ma always go hard. I'ma always show good sportsmanship. You know, I'ma uh, respect the other team for sure. Oh, there's a steal, that's Antoine Johnson gliding in and laying it up and in. I love Coach White, you know, that's, you know, he's one of the most genuine guys I've ever met. Uh, it's really no difference to me because, you know, uh, on the Goldie squad, practice squad, and he was our full-time coach. I was happy when he got the job, actually. You know, I'm just ready to work. Cause I know he gonna take us far. Well, for the team, I, uh, I definitely want to get back to the NCAA tournament. You know, I want to win the MAC championship. When basketball all, all over said and done, you know, I, I really want to, uh, you know, invest in real estate, do something in that field. My grandmother, uh, she always, you know, uh, we used, she used to call me in her room. We used to watch the home garden, you know, television, and she used to always like to show me the houses and stuff. And like at a young age, I just like kind of fell in love with houses and like remodeling them. I feel like this team can, you know, go just as far as we did last year, you know, because you know, uh, I feel like everyone got this chip on their shoulder, and you know, at a, you know, like to a certain extent, everybody got something to prove. Three points and four rebounds in the first half from Antoine Johnson. I know he wants more. The Bulls would like more, but they're probably happy where they are right now. Tied at 29, more of halftime from UB's Alumni Arena coming up on ESPN+. As parents of six, this network is one less thing I have to worry about. Why the Aceves family chose Verizon. We all use our phones very differently. These two are always gaming, and this one's always on FaceTime. And my oldest is learning to be a pilot. We need a reliable network because I need to know he's safe. As soon as he lands, he knows he better call mama. Mama. <laughs> the network more people rely on gives you more. Like plans your family can mix and match starting at just $35 and Apple Music on us. Plus up to $650 off the latest iPhone when you switch. That's Verizon. 13,000 feet has a way of testing a man's soul. After all, you were never meant to take on such an endeavor. That long drop is what separates human from superhuman. And here we are, right here, right now. You're good at motivation, we're good at your insurance. Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance and stop knocking on wood. When there's a power out, we're the ones out there fixing it. Rain, snow, heat, we're out there. Every day, we're working to keep homes and businesses connected. Testing equipment, replacing thousands of electrical poles, expanding our energy grid. And no matter what happens, we're prepared around the clock to keep the lights on. You're not leaving, you're there until they have power. With the hardworking people we have on the line, the energy to serve our community is boundless. Cadillac, for those who know the finish line, is only the beginning. Meet the refined Cadillac CT5. Others talk about the road to success. We make cars for it. Little Caesars delivery. That's the best thing since sliced bread. We got a problem. 
There's a new best thing. New ideas. Go. Travel sliced bread. Sparkle bread. Bread pets. Dear Lord. Run the numbers. Ran the numbers. I'll run them again. Sliced bread is toast. This is not happening. Everything is fine. <laughs> <laughs> Little Caesar's delivery. Best thing since sliced, sliced bread. I know. Save five dollars or more over other national chains on delivered pizza. Pizza, pizza. Sports fans, get to Alumni Arena on Wednesday, February 26th. The UB women's basketball team hosts Miami of Ohio at 7 p.m. Only two regular season home games remain for the Bulls, so be sure to get your tickets today. To order, call 1-877-UB-THERE-VISIT-UBBULLS.COM. T-Mobile's new offer on iPhone 11 is even better on our newest, most powerful signal. Switch to T-Mobile now and get two lines of unlimited for only $90 and two iPhone 11s on us. Only at T-Mobile. Acura in two words. Supercars. When you hit that water, you're going to want to look for weeds, sunken structures, down trees. Stuff like that. And let that breeze tell you where you want to go. Windy days like this, those bait fish will come swimming closer to shore. They'll bring the big boys with them, those bass and those pike. And they like cooler temperatures, so you ain't likely to have much luck. You're good at giving fishing advice. We're good at your insurance. Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance and stop knocking on wood. When there's a power out, we're the ones out there fixing it. Rain, snow, heat, we're out there. Every day, we're working to keep homes and businesses connected. Testing equipment, replacing thousands of electrical poles, expanding our energy grid. And no matter what happens, we're prepared around the clock to keep the lights on. You're not leaving, you're there until they have power. With the hardworking people we have on the line, the energy to serve our community is boundless. Introducing Wendy's 2 for 5. The only 2 for 5 with Wendy's fresh, never frozen beef and the spicy chicken you crave. Choose from the Dave's Single Spicy Chicken Sandwich, 10-piece crispy, or spicy nuggets. Pick any two for five bucks. Only at Wendy's. Gatorade Zero. All the electrolytes, zero sugar. Boom, and I really care what my mom Bulldozer, make room. Write that pun for me too. Ready for more? Bring it on. Gatorade Zero. Get more out of zero. Like leather, skin is stronger when it's hydrated, but 9 out of 10 men don't get the hydration their skin needs. That's why Dove Men Plus Care Body Wash has a unique hydrating formula to keep men's skin healthier and stronger. Right now, a movement of young people are stepping up to shred hate and choose kindness. Join one of the largest anti-cyberbullying campaigns ever. Text SHRED to 38383. Do something.org. Let's do this. Here at UB, we are asking the big questions. How do we engage in the process of shaping the world to create the spaces and the environments we want to inhabit? We're looking at the forces that surround us. We're questioning them and responding. What we think of as just natural and just existing actually have ideologies behind them. We are researching the intersection of engineering and medicine. This has the potential to completely change the paradigms of biological engineering. We are personalizing music education, the feeling behind the music, the communication with the audience. Our next generation of physicians will improve care in a way that we have not seen. This technology can transform lives across the boundaries of trust. We're working to understand the future of ice on Earth. The research has implications for everyone on the planet. It only takes a few inspiring minds to make magic happen. There's no limit to what you can discover. The only thing that makes T-Mobile's new offer on iPhone 11 better is the people you share it with. So right now, switch to T-Mobile and get two lines of unlimited for only $90 and two iPhone 11s on us. All on our newest, most powerful signal that goes farther than ever before. Hurry into T-Mobile now and get two lines of unlimited for only $90 and two iPhone 11s on us. Only at T-Mobile. 
Acura in two words. <laughs> Supercars. Thirteen thousand feet has a way of testing a man's soul. After all, you were never meant to take on such an endeavor. That long drop is what separates human from superhuman. And here we are, right here, right now. You're good at motivation, we're good at your insurance. Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance and stop knocking on wood. When there's a power out, we're the ones out there fixing it. Rain, snow, heat, we're out there. Every day, we're working to keep homes and businesses connected. Testing equipment, replacing thousands of electrical poles, expanding our energy grid. And no matter what happens, we're prepared around the clock to keep the lights on. You're not leaving, you're there until they have power. With the hardworking people we have on the line, the energy to serve our community is boundless. Oh, quarter pound double cheeseburger, look at that. Man, that looks juicy. What about this crispy tender sandwich? I know. Oh man, we both got tots all for $2.99, this is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Gotta love the Car Hop Classic. How fast does Dove Dry Spray actually dry? Dry Spray dries in an instant, leaving these men with nothing to do in this ad. Thankfully, we've got something to fill the time, instantly putting these guys back into their comfort zone. Dove Dry Spray dries instantly and keeps you protected for 48 hours. Gatorade Zero. All the electrolytes, zero sugar. Boom, and I really care what my mom went to. Bulldozer, make room. Write that pun for me to Ready for more? Bring it on. Gatorade Zero. Get more out of zero. Set to start the second half here in Buffalo's Alumni Arena, right where we started it. Tied up. 29-29 after an 8-0 Buffalo run as Ball State does not score in the final three minutes and 21 seconds of the first half, Matt. And that, I think, combined with the struggles for Tajay Teague with points and fouls have been kind of the story of the first half. Well, early on, we saw Jerron Coleman doing everything he wanted offensively. Buffalo went back into the huddle, went to the whiteboard. They figured out a way to take Coleman out of the game for the remainder of that first half. And really, that led to Ball State's offensive sputter we saw there down the stretch. How about that little uh, flip up and around shot by Javon Graves to make sure it wouldn't get blocked? And that gives Buffalo the lead. That hasn't happened since early in this game. Backdoor cut will not connect. Antoine Johnson bounce pass him. Bala for two. Beautiful pass from Antoine Johnson. Talk about thread the needle. Josh Bala continues his excellent night. How about what Josh has done here so far? 12 points, eight rebounds. He's drawn four fouls, Paul. He's getting to the free throw line. He's doing everything for Buffalo. It's a 12-0 Buffalo run that ends there on the Ishmael El Amin three-pointer and ends that scoring drought and almost four and a half minutes over through halftime. Jordan Hanks can't hit off the rim. No good. Rebounded by Teague. Well, Buffalo held Ishmael El Amin to just three points there in that first half. And this man right here, Teague to just two. And Josh Abala wants to keep it right where he is. Another phenomenal defensive effort. Take another look at it. Watch the block shot by Look at Teague almost backed his way under the basket. But Abala wouldn't let it go in. It's almost like a sneak shot there. He had his back turned right to Josh. Really nice heads up defensive play from Mbala. Oh, and a good give back pass off the inbound right back to Coleman for the basket. Nicely done by Tajay Teague, who's a pretty good passer himself. That's over 50 assists this year for Teague. But only two points right now for Tajay Teague, and a guy who averages 15 a game. That has been part of the issue for Ball State. Nathan Williams had it tied up by El Amin, and that will go to the Cardinals. Yeah, Teague has had seven 20-point games or more this season, Paul, including that one where he blew up for 25 against Buffalo. So you know UB went back to the tape there, took a look at it, and said, hey, let's figure out a way to keep this kid under wraps. Teague this time will kick it back out. El Amin's got the hot hand. 
two second half three-pointers for Ishmael El Amin gives Ball State the four-point advantage. 42% three-point shooter. Buffalo so worried about taking Teague out of the game. All of a sudden, Ishmael El Amin has had some things open up outside for Ball State. And J uh, Javon Graves just can't get those little floaters that he's so good at hitting. They can't get them to fall. Let's watch the guy who is getting him to fall right now. Really, Buffalo, like I said, they're trying to layer their defense to take Teague out of the game, right? They're making sure he's not getting one-on-one -on -one down on that block. And in doing so, that Buffalo defense is shrinking into the paint, which is allowing the open looks from each uh, Elamine we're seeing here early in the second half. So while we're talking about the leading scorer for Ball State and Teague struggling, there's a three from Jonathan Williams. I was about to say the leading scorer for the Bulls, Javon Graves is having his own issues himself, but if guys like Jonathan can hit the threes, that's going to go a long way towards filling that gap. And that's nice defense by Jonathan Williams off the attempted pass to Teague. Williams for Johnson, 4-3. That one was deflected. Graves is there for the rebound. And it's Teague that pulls it down. Oh, Teague had an opportunity to get it out in transition as well. Instead, the sharpshooter, Bumbelow, not able to connect. But high octane action here in the first couple of minutes, Paul. Pace has picked up, and yeah. Buffalo's defense has picked up as well. Well, you got to know where Teague is on the court. You got to credit Jonathan Williams there for realizing you got to leave your man, see where that pass is going, read the defense, and he made a nice play on it, but not a great play that time as he's nope. going to get flagged for the foul. That'll be the second of the game on the sophomore from Rochester, New York, Jonathan Williams. He was trying to plead his case here to the officials, but as you see, it's just not much to plead if you're Jonathan there as he just had him by the arm and put him down to the court. And another nice inbounds pass and a nice basket for Ball State. They've been terrific on the inbounds, and that's 17 points for Jerron Coleman. Johnson in the lane, left-handed layup off glass, won't go. Mbala rips it away and gets fouled. A phenomenal effort by Josh Mbala down low. Never giving up on a play, but really credit the Buffalo guards here, too, as they've been able to penetrate. And that's Tajay Teague, the recipient of a beautiful inbounds pass. Just his second basket of the contest, as Buffalo has done well to keep him under wraps. Got a double team in and making sure he doesn't get open looks, but slipped, uh, slipped the coverage on that one. Johnson spins in the lane. Off back iron, no good. Something to keep your eye on too moving forward, Paul. Remember, Teague has three fouls. We'll see if Buffalo remembers that and can take advantage here. Go right at him. Elamin thought he could keep that hot hand going. He could not. Antoine Johnson got a hot hand right now. His first three of the night. And we're all tied up again. Got the feeling it's going to be that way a lot here over the final 15 and a half minutes. Yeah, does that surprise you? It does not. <laughs> this drive to the hoop by Kyle Mowers. Remember, when these two teams met for the first time, back on January 7th, it was a 20-point, 88-68 Ball State game. That game got a little out of control. That's what tends to happen. Here's Bumbelo off the rim on the drive. No call, no foul, no basket. Taken right back by Elamine for the slam. That's just the, one of those things that happened. You got a nice effort by Buffalo to save it from going out of bounds. Good positioning by Ball State. And they'll take advantage the first time. But the second opportunity comes through with the two-handed flush. And now the Bulls may be trying to slow things down just a little bit. Run the set offense. Kick it out for Johnson. That one rims out. And a foul going to be called as there's bodies all over the floor. Mallers is down, Jonathan Williams is down. There's putting it down by Ishmael Elamine. You leave it to me. I'll get your taxes in an okay place. What? Well, just as soon as my audit is over. This gets my undivided attention. Take a lot of trips to the islands, Phil. Pretty great, right? Oh, Phil's legally dead. Fell off a boat. 
Going by Dennis now. Solari. <laughs> Long story. And we got, oh, no. I'm not gonna wanna see this. Let I me don't think this is gonna work. Just okay is not okay. AT&T has America's best network, now with our best plans at our best prices, starting at $35 a month per line for four lines. New from AT&T. Acura, in two words. <laughs> Supercars. When there's a power out, we're the ones out there fixing it. Rain, snow, heat, we're out there. Every day, we're working to keep homes and businesses connected. Testing equipment, replacing thousands of electrical poles, expanding our energy grid. And no matter what happens, we're prepared around the clock to keep the lights on. You're not leaving, you're there until they have power. With the hardworking people we have on the line, the energy to serve our community is boundless. Well, one of the best times of the year for college basketball fans in general. Take a look at the Mid-American Conference standings. Things are really shaping up here in the MAC. The top four seeds, remember, receive a first-round bye. So important when we head to Cleveland to see if Buffalo can defend their title. Ball State and Buffalo both come in at 7-5. and five. And remember, Ball State beat Buffalo earlier this year in early January. So UB desperately needing to win here tonight against Ball State. A lot of action in the Mid-American Conference. And, you know, we got a tight ball game here, Paul. And, does it surprise you at all that the largest gap of points right now in the Mid-American Conference is only seven currently with all three other games being played? It does not. Remember, top four teams get the bye to Cleveland regardless of division, so it could be all four Eastern Division teams. And then the next four teams are going to get that home playoff game on campus sites to advance to Cleveland. So that's why those that bye to Cleveland is so critical. Not having to play on a Monday and getting to take your time getting to Cleveland and an extra night's sleep there is huge for these college basketball teams. Coleman rims out the three. Rebounded by Jordan. This is LaQuill Hardnett back in the game. He gets a shot block from behind by Mallers. Teague for three off the front rim. No good, he'll get his rebound back. El Amin, long three, no good. And now the three-point shooting issues, quote-unquote, for Ball State starting to become a factor while the Bulls hit from distance. Javon Graves joining the party from beyond the arc here in the second half as the junior sticks one from the left baseline. Good transition find there by the Bulls. Nice distribution on the offensive end. Three-point shooting half, stats in, uh, in the half. Two of seven, Ball State, three of six for Buffalo. Take another look at this one. Devontae Jordan, good find there in transition. And we said it earlier, Buffalo really needs to take advantage of that. We've seen firsthand here tonight, Paul, just how good this half-court defense is from Ball State. So if you're a Buffalo and you can get a good shot early in transition before the Cardinals can get set up, that's great. This is Hazen in with three fouls. Down low for Coleman. And that floater from the side of the basket by Acre is no good. But Ball State gets it back. Stolen away by Jordan. Threw it right to him. Corner three by Sagu was partially blocked. And save right to Sagu, who gets it to his teammate. Ball movement for the Bulls. Grant for three, no good. I know they don't come up with a basket there, Paul, but you said the ball movement was phenomenal. You love when Buffalo's offense looks like that. Hazen backing in on Hardnet. Bounced it to the cutting Elamine. Now back out, shot clock under 10. Mallers will just put it up, and he won't hit it. He'll battle for his own rebound, but instead it's Graves. Here come the Bulls. Jordan all the way and in. Again, Paul, you're seeing it. Buffalo has become more successful with how aggressive they've been. 
a lot of drives and they go up with it, but we've also seen that driving kick as well here in the second half. That must have been a nice concerted effort uh, in the halftime speech from Coach Weitzel to say, look, we have to be more aggressive. And we're now approaching a three-minute scoring drought for Ball State. They ended the first half on a three-plus minute scoring drought, and that drought will continue for the Cardinals, but not until we get timeout called. We're going back and forth. We're tight one point here and there at the moment. It's Buffalo that holds the one-point advantage. You leave it to me. I'll get your taxes in an okay place. What? Well, just as soon as my audit is over. This gets my undivided attention. Take a lot of trips to the islands, Phil. Pretty great, right? Oh, Phil's legally dead. Fell off a boat. Going by Dennis now. Solari. <laughs> Long story. Then we got, oh, no. We're not going to want to see this. Let I me don't think this is going to work. Just OK is not OK. AT&T has America's best network, now with our best plans at our best prices, starting at $35 a month per line for four lines. New from AT&T. Acura, in two words. <laughs> Supercars. When you hit that water, you're going to want to look for weeds, sunken structures, down trees, stuff like that. And let that breeze tell you where you want to go. Windy days like this, those bait fish will come swimming closer to shore. They'll bring the big boys with them, those bass and those pike. And they like cooler temperatures, so you ain't likely to have much luck. You're good at giving fishing advice. We're good at your insurance. Start with Indiana Farm Bureau Insurance and stop knocking on wood. Sometimes you just want to stay in. Enjoy the great taste of Dunkin' at home. Well, Mr. Matia, the question is, is the unstoppable force been less stoppable today? And has the immovable object slid a little bit one way or the other? <laughs> you know, it's a mouthful to keep track of here. But you know, they say defense wins championships. But really what we've seen is Buffalo has risen to the level of the Ball State defense here in the second half as well. It's not just been Ball State who has played good defense. Buffalo has figured out a way to take Ball State out of rhythm. They're not shooting the ball well from beyond the arc. That's something that they live and die by. So... Yes, Ball State's defense has been great. Buffalo not shooting the lights out, but you really got to give credit to the way UB's defense has played as well. Yeah, and I think that 70-point number is kind of the magic one that we've talked about, that Ball State doesn't score over 70 a lot, but they hold people under 70, and when they do, they've won 14 of their 18 games when it's happened. And I think this is kind of one of those games where you're not quite sure why, which team, if either, is going to get to that 70-point mark because the shooting has been sporadic at best. And on the drive to the basket, we're going to get a whistle block on Gabe Grant. Kanai Acri. Yeah, Gabe we'll knew it too, as you see. He didn't quite ever get his feet set. He just kind of ran into him there, and he nodded as soon as he got called. But you like the idea, the rotation, but good penetration from Acri catching Buffalo. One player out of rotation there. Yeah, left two shots at the charity stripe. Acre did not score in the first meeting between these two teams, but has four in the game above his season average and a chance to add a couple of more. And that will be the start of it. Redshirt freshman from Carbondale, Indiana, Kanai Acre. Acre. Hit them both. That was a key for how Buffalo was able to sustain those offensive droughts they went on in the first half, Paul, was the free throws. Maybe Ball State needs to try to take a little page out of Buffalo's book and get to the charity stripe a little more. Yep, that ended a three-and-a-half-minute scoring drought for Ball State. Johnson for three, bullseye! And Antoine Johnson, how good is this Buffalo team going to be moving forward here going into Cleveland if Antoine Johnson can continue to knock down shots like that? Well, again, three-point shooting is sometimes a product of good ball movement, and we've seen a much better approach from Buffalo from about midway through the first half. Agreed. Buffalo will drive and draw the foul. The freshman from Newcastle, Indiana, Luke Buffalo, will go to the line. 
But you said the ball movement. There's the first pass from Segu. Another dribble penetration from Jordan. He draws two defenders. No one home to get a hand in the face of Antoine Johnson. You said it best ball. That ball movement has been huge for Buffalo. That's three fouls on Antoine Johnson now. And it's Bumbalo, a 58% free throw shooter, hits the first. Finalist for Mr. Basketball in the state of Indiana. 1,717 career points at Newcastle High, second all-time at that school to the great Steve Alford. You know, some people tell me I look a little like Steve Alford. They do not say that when they see me on the basketball court, though. <laughs> uh, I can see it. I can see yeah, it. a little bit. I prefer not to generally bring his name up as a Syracuse University graduate um, who remembers 1987's national championship game. You and a lot of other Syracuse grads. Yep. Get a little hand check foul on Josh Thompson there. The matchup of the threes here in the backcourt. Thompson and Graves, Javon drawing that contact. And uh, that's a, you know, Buffalo's again inching towards that bonus, Paul, where they were so good in the first half, which helped them keep them in their game. Keep an eye on the foul count here on Ball State. Graves for Grant, Grant for Mbala. Josh will make a nice move, but comes up short on the layup and then grabs his own rebound and travel. Well, the crowd didn't like wow. that. They wanted some contact called on a foul. Well, let's see let's here. That see. was a tough one to see from our angle. Did he get his legs taken out from under him on the second uh, second opportunity here? What do you think? Well, yeah, there was a little bit of hip contact from Teague maybe, but I don't know if that's enough. Tough call. And Teague tried to find the cutter, Hazen, and instead throws it out of bounds. It's been... But it's a tough night for the great Tajay T. Just four points for him. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. I didn't see a whole lot. Nope. Like, uh, I'm not going to die on that hill of arguing there. Five minutes without a field goal from Ball State, and that's going to be against Buffalo. Gabe Grant kind of pushing off to the set the screen illegally, his third foul. So the turnover numbers have been a big part of it. You just saw those. And again, 5-0-6 without a field goal for Ball State here. But now, free throws except, keeping them in there here. In the Buffalo second. has not really taken advantage. Thus, only a one-point lead. And Johnson splits the D and draws a foul. Gets a little bit of a wry cheer from the alumni arena crowd as well, saying it's about time you called one. Yep, yeah, that, the shooting numbers are not real pretty in this game, uh, either from the field or from three-point distance. Ball State 6 of 23, Buffalo 6 of 24. There's the numbers right there. Got a March feel to it, though. Doesn't this sort of a quarterfinal, yeah, semifinal matchup? Just neither team relenting. Maybe not everything going their way, but. Boy, that's a basket that Jonathan Williams generally puts in after a nice move to create himself room. And that's been a little bit of the story of the night for him and for both teams. Down low for Teague. Guarded by Mbala, Teague to the cutter, Hayes, and that was blocked by Mbala. Get it out of here, he says. Back out in transition now. How about it, Rondo? He'll kick to Johnson. Three's good. And I'll tell you, the crowd is just waiting to blow the roof off the Alumni Arena. But Bottner Paul, it all got started with the Mbala block. The Buffalo defense has been just phenomenal. And finally, the crowd here at Alumni Arena has got some stuff to be excited about on both ends of the court. It's Buffalo with its largest lead of the night. Bulls by four. When I showed my mom the DNA results, it made her feel proud. They saw us, they recognized us. Ancestry specifically showed the regions that my family was from the state of Jalisco, the city of Guadalajara. The results were a reflection of our family and the results were really human. I feel proud about my identity. Greater details, richer stories. And now with Health Insights, get your DNA kit at Ancestry.com. Acura in two words. Supercars.
When you build your investments with principal, you can build so much more. This is for me, son? You gonna help me finish this thing or what? Principal, we can help you plan for that. Start today at principal.com. When there's a power out, we're the ones out there fixing it. Rain, snow, heat, we're out there. Every day, we're working to keep homes and businesses connected. Testing equipment, replacing thousands of electrical poles, expanding our energy grid. And no matter what happens, we're prepared around the clock to keep the lights on. You're not leaving, you're there until they have power. With the hardworking people we have on the line, the energy to serve our community is boundless. Well, both of these teams got their eye on the scoreboard watching this game because Kent State's the third team that's seven and five right now in the MAC, and boy, Eastern Michigan's starting to play some good basketball. Yeah, that would be a, a big win for Eastern Michigan if they can come out on top, and not just uh, for Eastern Michigan, but for Buffalo too, because as you said, a Kent State, another one of those teams that's right hanging around that seven and five, vying for that four seed, and. Tell you, this is just the best time of the year when not only is your game so important, but every other game that's being played carries almost as much importance. So a good sequence for the Bulls that we showed you before the break has led to this four-point lead. And Ball State has got to figure something out offensively here. Let's see if Maulers is the guy to do it. No, and the drought continues for the Cardinals. This Buffalo defense has been phenomenal, and that's why you're wondering, how does a team like that go six minutes plus without scoring? Well, you start with the rotations, the effort, just the phenomenal defensive play out of the Buffalo Bulls holding Ball State quiet. Antoine Johnson cannot hit the three. So they're in another drought here are the Cardinals at 2.15, but the field goal drought is over six minutes. Their only points have been a couple of free throws but a four-point game. Right. Because for all of those discouraging numbers for Ball State, there haven't been a lot of them positive for Buffalo, and that's Ishmael el -Amin putting an end to that uh, drought for the Cardinals with his 10th second half point. Head and shoulders fake by Johnson, drive to the lane. And the putback slam by the big guy, Mbala. Get up there, Josh Mbala. And that also counts as another offensive rebound for the nation's 11th leading offensive rebounder. And that's the fourth foul on Tajay T. That's a really important call. 7.25 to go, and another foul on the Ball State star. There's the slam foul up for the Bulls, and a big one on the other end. The foul on Teague, but still just a four-point game. Verizon 4G, T-Mobile 5G. Which do you think will be faster? I would imagine 5G. I'm assuming 5G is faster. Because it's it's a higher number. Yeah. Do you want to see for real? Yes. These are normal fingers. You want to test them out? And here we go. Look what it's doing! Verizon 4G is faster than T-Mobile's 5G in New York City. It's sort of a heartbreak in a way. T-Mobile's so much slower, but they have a higher number. You gotta feel bad for them a little. <laughs> yeah. When you build your investments with principal, you can build so much more. This is for me, son? You gonna help me finish this thing or what? Principal, we can help you plan for that. Start today at principal.com. When there's a power out, we're the ones out there fixing it. Rain, snow, heat, we're out there. Every day, we're working to keep homes and businesses connected. Testing equipment, replacing thousands of electrical poles, expanding our energy grid. And no matter what happens, we're prepared around the clock to keep the lights on. You're not leaving, you're there until they have power. With the hardworking people we have on the line, the energy to serve our community is boundless. Well, remember this moment with 7.25 to go in the game. 
the fourth foul, an offensive foul on Tajay Teague. You know, if you're a Ball State fan, I think you're complaining about that one. If you're a Buffalo fan, you're saying phenomenal call. I think, I think that's where one of those calls goes down there. So Tajay Teague, who has only four points, does have ten rebounds for the 10th time this year, double figure on the rebound front, but only four points for Ball State's leading scorer. He's been in double figures in 11 straight games. That is in jeopardy at the moment, but are you surprised he's staying in with four fouls? I am, and if I am the Buffalo Bulls, I am immediately going to Josh Mbala or driving down the lane like that. So there you go, a foul. I think they're going to go off ball on that one, and they do, but that's a smart play by Buffalo Paul. Go right at the kid with four fouls, and especially when he's as good as Tajay Tegan. Yeah, it'll be on El Amin instead. It'll be his second, but it'll send Javon Graves to the free throw line. I would have guessed for sure that he would have come out until at least the under four media break. And Javon Graves, after struggling a bit in the first half, now up to 11 points. And chipping in with seven rebounds. Graves has become a pretty good rebounder lately. Well, that's part of the reason why Buffalo is such a good rebounding team. There's a few things you can point at, but the guards get to the glass. Both Jordan and Graves averaging over five rebounds a game. Yeah, they are number two in the country in rebounding on the Bulls. Back out of the defensive end where they have been stout here this half. Largest lead of the game for the Bulls. Into Teague, who kicks it out. El Amin for three. It won't go. Yeah, that's a contested shot. Very good rotation on the Buffalo defense. Sagu, quick, quickness to the hoop. He'll dribble back around and feed Graves, who can't hit. Coleman. Been quiet here, quieter here in the second half than he was in the first. And this ball state has struggled to find any consistent offense. Mallers will drive baseline and back it out. And now the shot clock is at six. Uh, Coleman will roll it off. Man, I'm telling you, just like Buffalo had early on, Ball State's got a lid on their rim now. And Graves going right down the middle will draw the foul, and I think it's going to be on Mallers. They called a jump Did ball they? there, and I think they went no call on the block and a jump ball there. Oh, going you're right. Through. Yep, Bumbleo grabbed it, got a, a hand on the ball from behind. So it'll stick here with Buffalo, but but just another example of going right down the middle, trying Correct. to maybe get that fifth foul on T. Yep, you've got everyone on this floor is aware that he's got four. Graves whips it back out for Jordan, and the senior Devonte Jordan from Coco, Florida will reset to Nate Jonathan Williams, long on the three, and that's, five. that's the fifth. Wow. If it's on Teague, and it, it should is. be, that's his fifth, and it is. So there's your calculated risk, right? There's something to be said about you want your best player on the, the, on the court no matter what, but that time it comes back to bite Ball State as he gets a high five from head coach James Whitford, and Tajay Teague's night here in Western New York is over early. Yep, and, and the fourth foul on an offensive, the fifth foul on a ticky-tack, I want to say, rebounding foul is not what Ball State wanted. And their star player, Tajay Teague, who had 25 in the first meeting between these two teams, will sit on the bench for the rest of the night with only four points. Yeah, it's too bad. Teague's just a phenomenal player. You love seeing him play out there. It's an unfortunate ending to Teague's evening. And credit to the Bulls for a game plan that used Mbala to go right at him, because I think one way or the other, Josh Mbala probably drew three, if not four, of those fouls. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, Josh has been phenomenal here for Buffalo. He's got to be the player of the game here just all game long. Remember early on, Paul, when nothing was going for Buffalo, it was Josh Mbala who was keeping them in that game in the first half. Look at that stat line, 14 and 14, and the chance to add on it, the free throw line. That's the fourth foul on Hazen, who's in for Teague. And Jonathan Williams tracks the rebound down and draws a foul on El Amin. So Jonathan Williams will go to the free throw line now. Buffalo 11 of 15 from the free throw line. Bala's been there the most, but there's been a nice group of players who have been able to get to the charity stripe as free throws win championships. You know what they say. 
First end of the one and one is good for Jonathan Williams, his first free throw of the night. And now these are the little things that Buffalo is doing to build the seven point lead. Free throws, forcing fouls, working the clock, getting good shots, and playing great defense. It's all started on this side of the ball here, Paul. Almost a steal right there by Mbala. El Amin will float it in. And a lot of pressure is going to be on Ishmael El Amin to pick up the scoring slack from Teague. Graves, three, no good. But a rebound by Jordan. Sagu for three, no good. Rebound tipped out. Jordan, wide open, three, bullseye! And I think we're going to get a foul. Yeah, that's exactly what we're going to get. A three-pointer for the Bulls and a foul on Ball State. So we're going to have shots coming here for Buffalo on top of the triple. Just a brutal break for the Cardinals here over this last four or five-minute stretch. Yep, it's going to be a foul on Mallers, his third. So we got a chance at a five-point trip down court for Buffalo to go up by double digits. How about this for you talk about what helps win championships, Paul? When Buffalo leads with five minutes left this season, they are 14 and one. And barring some 10-point shot, I don't know about here for Ball State. Buffalo's going to have the lead in about eight seconds with five minutes left. And right now, the Bulls are hitting their free throws, 14 of 18 in the game. And again, if you've been with us all night, Ball State out to a big start, led by 10 with six minutes to go in the first half and then went deadly cold, allowed Buffalo to come back and end the half on an 8-0 run to tie the game up. And in this last seven or eight minute sequence of the second half, Buffalo has built this lead. Another miss by Ball State and another rebound for Imbala, his 15th of the night. Jonathan Williams with the reverse. Nathan Williams having a quiet night, but no points. He's just snuck up on Ball State today as the youngster out of Rochester having another nice game here in conference play. Oh, nice pass to Hazen on the cut to the basket, and that will draw the foul. Just court awareness here from Jonathan too, Paul. It's sometimes tough when you get lost under the basket like that to figure out where you are, but the youngster does well to kind of go off his body and lay it in. And there's Jonathan drawing the foul, his fourth of the night, that sends Hazen to the free throw line. It's a 12-3 Buffalo run that we're in the midst of right now. And again, a lot of stretches where James Whitford's team just went scoreless. Big drought at the end of the first half, big drought here in the second half. Hazen with two free throws, four in the game for him but it remains a 10-point lead. Chance for Ball State to move into a tie for first with an idle Northern Illinois on the line tonight. Chance for Buffalo to win their third straight game, and that may tell you what you need to know. Rise up, Josh Mbala continuing to pour it on now. 16 points for Mbala. And oh, by the way, he's grabbed 15 boards. He's in range of career highs for both. And that's a foul down low as Hazen goes up. Career highs for Josh Mbala, 18 points and 17 rebounds. So that may have to be changed. I mean, the young man is a double-double machine. He's had seven double-doubles this season, and he's had four more games where he was only one board short of double-doubles, but had another one on the list tonight. And remember, since he's this is now the sixth straight game that he's coming off the bench, four minutes to go in this one. We take immediate timeout with Buffalo up by 12. You leave it to me. I'll get your taxes in an okay place. What? Well, just as soon as my audit is over, this gets my undivided attention. You take a lot of trips to the islands, Phil. Pretty great, right? Oh, Phil's legally dead. Fell off a boat. Going by Dennis now. Solari. <laughs> Long story. Then we got, oh, no. We're not gonna wanna see this. Let I me don't think this is gonna work. Just okay is not okay. AT&T has America's best network, now with our best plans at our best prices, starting at $35 a month per line for four lines. New from AT&T. Acura, in two words. Supercars.
When you build your investments with principal, you can build so much more. This is for me, son? You gonna help me finish this thing or what? Principal, we can help you plan for that. Start today at principal.com. When there's a power out, we're the ones out there fixing it. Rain, snow, heat, we're out there. Every day, we're working to keep homes and businesses connected. Testing equipment, replacing thousands of electrical poles, expanding our energy grid. And no matter what happens, we're prepared around the clock to keep the lights on. You're not leaving, you're there until they have power. With the hardworking people we have on the line, the energy to serve our community is boundless. Well, we're scoreboard watching here in Buffalo because with only five games left before the MAC tournament starts, these games start to mean something, and Matt will explain why that score means so much. Yeah, Kent State right there in the Mid-American Conference standings. Really important game out in Ypsilanti. Of course, Eastern Michigan not really in the running for a top-four seed, but right in a row, Ball State, Kent State, Buffalo. We've talked about it all night. Buffalo on the verge of moving to 8-5. and five. Kent State and Ball State would both fall, and of course, you don't need me to tell you, that would move Buffalo right up to the yep. four seat. And Buffalo and Kent State play each other on Friday night. So if it all holds up tonight, Buffalo grabs that four spot, and then we'll have to defend it on Friday night in Kent, Ohio. It's a 12-point UB lead as Hazen rims out the free throw. Still plenty of time here if you're a Ball State to, to kind of work things in. I, you know, I know they've gone really cold here, and Buffalo's defense has, has really stepped up to the plate down the stretch. But if you're Ball State, the message is, look, 11-point game, four minutes. Remember last time out, Paul, Ball State trailed by 20 points to Bowling Green and cut that all the way down to a three-point game. So Ball State not out of this one yet. Now Gray's going hard to the hoop, draws a foul. Yeah, the guards here have been so aggressive in the second half for Buffalo, and that's why Buffalo's offense has been able to pull away here a little bit down the stretch. They were not settling for the shots. Remember early on in this game, a lot of contested threes, a lot of bad takes, completely flipped the script in the second half. The guards have forced the issue, taken it to the rack, and of course, earning themselves trips to the free throw line, where so far they've been excellent. Avon Graves, three of three from the free throw line, now 13 points for him coming off that 27-point effort on Friday night. And that's two for two for Graves. So early on when it looked like he was struggling, he's still right about his average at 14 points. And like you said, Ball State knows how to fight their way back. Let's see if, that, if they've got the ability to do that here. Coleman has been one of the only consistent scorers tonight. Shot clock at five. Mallers powers it in. All right, so there's the bucket if you're the Cardinals, but you got to get back to your bread and butter on the defensive end. You got to start stringing together stops and in a hurry. Keep an eye on to see if Ball State as well goes to a full court press here at some point in the final three minutes. That's exactly what they did against the Falcons, and it worked. from Buffalo. Jordan kicks it for Williams. Thought about the three. Instead, he'll drive and hit. You know, and a big 10-point second half for Jonathan Williams. And all those shots that were falling for Ball State in the first half are not falling now. Graves. Can't believe he didn't draw a foul. There was some uh, ball deflection involved there. Mallers quick three, no good. Williams with a rebound. And Coach Weitzel yelling out to his young guard, Rondo Sugu. Let's run the offense. Let's just take it easy here, make some good passes. Time is not on the side of Ball State. Shot clock at five. Williams better go. He will. He'll shoot and hit. <laughs> Just beating the shot clock. And Nathan Williams now with 16 points. A 
there's that 70-point mark, Paul. Why is that so important? Well, because Ball State has not won a game all season long when allowing 70 points. We talked about how good their defense has been. Their offense has been good enough. But when they don't play great defense, it has been tough for them to win. Uh, Buffalo has just completely stolen Ball State's thunder here with the defensive effort. Another contested three. Good effort by Segu to get a hand in the face, and that leads to another missed shot. And about 90 seconds or so away here from another win. Javon Graves patiently working the clock. You see the second half statistics and Graves gets his 16th point. Join the party, Javon. Now three Buffalo players with 16 points. It's a 43-point second half for the Bulls. Elamine hits. 18 in the game for Ishmael Elamin. Quick timeout taken by the Cardinals. 49 and a half seconds left. But, you know, when you look at the scoring chart, this is what makes Buffalo so hard to prep for, Paul. Who do you pick? You know, it's a pick your poison. Look at what Jonathan Williams has been able to do tonight. We've seen the Javon Graves baskets. I mean, that is a silly hard take. It's like eight ah, feet away from the back. Come on, on, what a brutal angle to try to score. But, you know, to go to the point, if you're Ball State, who do you prep for when you're looking at Buffalo, right? When you look at this UB team, there's so many offensive threats that they can bring at you, whether it be Graves, Jordan, Williams. We've seen Josh Mbala tonight, Antoine Johnson. This is a nightmarish matchup, I think, for most teams in the MAC. Buffalo is. Five players average in double figures for Buffalo. Five players in double figures for them tonight. And again, it's Graves sort of, they go as Graves goes, but if he's not going great, then Jonathan Williams and Mbala have shown the ability to step up. And so has Antoine Johnson and even Devontae Jordan double figures here tonight. So uh, it's been a stalwart here of Buffalo basketball over the last five or six years. Balanced scoring, high tempo, uh, ability to move the ball quickly, fast break. Um, and this year you've added in the State Nation's number two rebounding team that can compensate a little bit when the team doesn't shoot the ball well. And don't look now, but the team is Buffalo that is 11 out of 12 in the MAC in points per game this year, allowing 74 a game. They've only given up 64 a game the last three, and that's going to help again tonight as this Buffalo defense all of a sudden added to the repertoire. Graves has that one spin out, and Imbala will get called for a foul here with 23 seconds to go. But it's going to be a big victory for the Bulls. And the reason we talked about, aside from the standings, is if you're going to battle Ball State right down the stretch, now because the season series has been split, there's no big tiebreaker advantage for the Cardinals should Buffalo and Ball State wind up in a tie. So that's one of the uh, key factors that was, that was in play in this game tonight. Eastern Michigan continuing to lead Penn State as well. There are about six and a half minutes left. Eastern Michigan up by 13 out in Ypsilanti. Some substitutions here for the Bulls, clearing the bench a bit. Javon Graves, nice round of applause. 16 points and 10 rebounds yeah. for Javon Graves. A double-double for him. And a little bit of regrouping now to go on for Ball State. They've got nothing but Mac West opponents the rest of the way down the stretch. So still battling Northern Illinois for the division title. Central Michigan in the mix there as well, too. And the final seconds of this one are going to tick out on a very impressive Buffalo victory that if you were with us in the first 10 minutes of this game, I'm not sure you thought that was going to happen when at one point the Bulls were shooting 10% from the field but much better defense, much better scoring, terrific rebounding, and it all adds up to a 13-point victory for Jim Weitzel and his troops. Matt Mattia and I will return with our post-game show from here at Buffalo's Alumni Arena. Stick around for that coming up next on ESPN+. Plus. T-Mobile's new offer on iPhone 11 is even better on our newest, most powerful signal. Switch to T-Mobile now and get two lines of unlimited for only $90 and two iPhone 11s on us. Only at T-Mobile. Acura in two words. Mm -hmm. Supercar.
podcast. Capital One knows life doesn't update you about your credit card. So meet Eno, the Capital One assistant that catches things that might look wrong and helps you fix them. Another way Capital One is watching out for your money when you're not. What's in your wallet? When there's a power out, we're the ones out there fixing it. Rain, snow, heat, we're out there. Every day, we're working to keep homes and businesses connected. Testing equipment, replacing thousands of electrical poles, expanding our energy grid. And no matter what happens, we're prepared around the clock to keep the lights on. You're not leaving, you're there until they have power. With the hardworking people we have on the line, the energy to serve our community is boundless. What if once in a blue moon, happen more than once in a blue moon. Reach for the moon. Try Target same day delivery at your door so you can get more. More pamper. So more power. So more play. Target run and done. Buffalo's third win in a row improves the Bulls to 17-9 and nine and 8-5 and in the MAC. Welcome back to UP's Alumni Arena. It's our post-game show. I'm Paul Peck with Matt Mattia, now joined by Buffalo head coach Jim Weitzel. Jim, when your team started off struggling, the defense was always there. Never let Ball State get too far away. Right. That stretch right at the end of the half, three minutes scoreless to go in tied. Did that change the tone of this game? Yeah, we felt, we felt a lot better going into halftime. We closed the gap really well. And, uh, you know, getting there 29 29 because nothing offensively. They were guarding us very well. We couldn't get anything to go down. So uh, the guys hung in there. We talk about that all the time stay with it, close the gap, got some good energy, a good first two minutes of the second half. Then they hit us back. Then after that, we kind of just slowly built the lead up again. So, uh, Appreciate it. Crowd was great tonight. The guys really fed off their energy. Well, you look at what Tajay Teague has done, especially in conference play. He's one of the top post players, really, in the Mid-American Conference. But you guys come out here, and he gets in foul trouble. He does not get in his offensive groove. What do you credit that to defensively that you're able to hold Teague to uh, an off night? Well, the one thing we talked to our guys, he's a good player, very good player. He's been five times player of the week. He's going to get some. All right. The idea is don't. You got to be solid. Play great technique defense. You got to play great help. He's going to get some. Don't drop your head. Keep on playing. And I thought that was big. There is that. You know, we continue. Then he got in a little bit of foul trouble. So that always breaks your rhythm as a player. A big part of that was the play of Josh Mbala, our player of the game that we'll talk to in a moment. He kind of took it at uh, Teague on a number of occasions. And then on the flip side, 16 points and 15 rebounds. How much different is Josh playing now that he's coming off the bench? Do you think that's changing his approach? Well, I think it's helped him a little bit lock in. It's. Uh, and it also gives us a big bump offensively and defensively. We come in and, and we get better. And the other thing is, is that, you know, he's playing more minutes coming off the bench. He's had two games of 14 and now one of 15 rebounds coming off the bench. So it's paying dividends for us. We get better on both ends of the floor. It makes our bench stronger uh, with Rondo and Gabe coming in there. Savion got a couple minutes tonight. We're going to keep building that. That really helps our, our depth overall and keeps our guys fresh. All right. Congratulations on a third straight win, Coach. Thanks, uh, guys. Thanks, Thanks fans. Tonight. Appreciate it. That's Jim Weitzel, UB Bulls head coach. Speaking of the aforementioned Josh Mbala, he is our player of the game, and he's going to make his way over here to the table. We're going to get a chance to find out uh, what Josh was thinking on another impressive performance. And Josh, another double-double, 16 points, 15 rebounds. How yeah. good are you feeling about the way you're playing right now? I feel uh, pretty confident, you know. We knew how good they was, they, was, they was coming into this game. So we just knew we had to, to play harder than them and just bring the energy. Did anything go back to that first matchup when you guys were out in Muncie and struggled and Ball State was able to come away with a big win and now here you are, you're back defending your home court. Was there a little bit of the thought going into that that you really wanted to get oh, back yeah, at them? for sure, yeah, most def. Uh, we play a, it was a really tough game over there, so we knew we, we just had to bounce back from that and just give them 
our best game. Uh, you had a couple of your highlight reel block shots here tonight. You're among the MAC leaders in block shots. How much fun is that to be able to do that, get the crowd fired up, get your teammates fired up, and prevent a basket at its basic form? Yeah, I just try to play hard on both ends, just try to protect the rim, just not, don't give anything easily. Uh, well, it. that certainly was the case. Josh, <laughs> congratulations on another nice night, another big performance uh, among the nation's leading rebounders. You're going to keep that up. Congratulations on a third straight Appreciate win. Thank That's you. Josh Mbala, a key part of Buffalo's 72-59 to victory and a nice round of applause from the fans here for a 16.15 rebound effort from Josh Mbala. Bulls now 38-6 and in the last three years here at home. Much different team than the first matchup, Matt. Um, but again, we talked Talked about what could Buffalo's offense overcome Ball State's defense? Would it work the other way? I, I think we got a good handle that it was Buffalo's defense that kind of won this game. Yeah, that was the story coming in, right? We talked about it. It was the fact that Ball State's one of the top defensive teams in the MAC. Buffalo's one of the top offensive teams in the MAC. But really, UB relied on that defense today, and they say the defense wins championships. We know what UB can do offensively when they put that defensive part together. They're going to be a really scary team coming into March. Yeah, it was a big part of this victory. A couple of long scoring droughts for Ball State forced by Buffalo's defense. It gets Buffalo that third straight win. It was a fun night here at Alumni Arena. A lot of good offense, a lot of good defense, and a key Mid-American Conference game as we head towards March. A 72-59 Buffalo victory for Matt Mattia and our great crew here in Buffalo. My name is Paul Peck. Have yourself a great night. This has been a production of the Mid-American Conference and ESPN.